Now, if I had my wildest dreams, I would be, I thought I would be interviewing Mr. Paul Richards. <laughs> Seriously. Good morning, guys, and welcome to Unique Not Different. And with me, Shamla Maharaj. And as I mentioned, I have Mr. Paul Richards, who is the former senator of the 11th Parliament. And he is a renowned host of actually TTT and CMMG. And it, a couple of years ago, I was at a conference. And I was shocked because I, not, I don't think many know that he's a disability advocate. And he appears on various platforms. And he uses his senatorial position or former to you know, highlight the plight of persons with disability and other disenfranchised persons in Trinidad and Tobago. So Mr. Richards, good morning. And it's really, really a pleasure. And thank you. Before I could even end, thank you so much for doing this. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's my pleasure to be here. And congratulations on this fantastic and innovative show. I have to thank Lisa. Thank you well, so much. Thank you for Lisa. <laughs> when, I, when I saw the segment started mm -hmm. on the Now Morning Show, I thought this was such a, an amazing platform for persons with s disabilities and persons with special needs because there's the, the perception, there's an erroneous perception that persons with disabilities cannot do many, th they always focus exactly. on what they cannot do and, and not what they can do. Mm -hmm. And I thought this is such an innovative, pioneering segment on the national television platform that should be modeled around the Caribbean and the world. So congratulations to you Thank and Lisa you. and all, all who were involved. Thank you so much. And before we get into you know, the actual discussion, can you just explain briefly what, um, what inspired your advocacy for persons with disabilities so to give the audience a perspective? Well, interestingly enough, my journey started in media, as you know. Yes. And I was an advocate for people who didn't have a voice on radio right. and on television. And then I studied behavioral sciences, psychology, and sociology. And then I, I did a postgrad master's in education psychology, which has a huge component mm -hmm. uh, focusing on special needs interventions. Mm -hmm. And then when it, I, I realized that this became my passion right. in terms of understanding the intricacies of persons with disabilities, persons with special needs. And when I was uh, granted the honor of becoming a senator, yeah. I thought, what a better platform to advocate on persons who usually don't have that kind of voice yeah. in society so that people could understand what persons with disabilities face. And we could, at a state level, put systems in place mm -hmm. for re remediation and support so that they can achieve their full potential like you are doing. Excellent. And OK, so let's get straight into it. You know, election coming up. Yeah. Yes, and you know, know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, in terms of leading up to each election, you would always hear the narratives of what grants was given, what you know, what was put in place based on a charity model, mm -hmm. rather than what was implemented for persons with disability and other disenfranchised and vulnerable groups in society. In terms of okay. Um, rather than opportunities in terms of having their basic human rights followed in mm -hmm. education and stuff like that. In your experience, do, do you think that this should be changed? Yes, obviously. But why are we still in this charity-based model and we actually, you know, promoting this rather than what should be done for persons with disability and other vulnerable groups in society? Great question. You know, I don't know if people understand that 15% of the global population of just under 7 billion people have some sort of disability or special need. Mm -hmm. And of the 110 to 170 million people, those disabilities are significant. Mm -hmm. We have come, and, and disability advocacy and legislation has gone through, have gone through several stages. And globally, best practices would suggest that it can't be a charity-based model or an optional model. It has okay. to be based in law. Mm -hmm. Because if it's not based in law, persons have no fundamental rights in their jurisdiction. Yeah. And we are signatories to several uh, conventions in, in the UN mm -hmm. which, which suggest we should be following those models of changing our laws in education and other, other parts of the law to mandate that mm -hmm. persons with disabilities and special needs have coverage of the law and equal treatment of the law in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. It's a process. I think we're getting there. We've started to have some levels of discussion, mm -hmm. but I'm hoping some government that would come into power or stay in power depending on, on what happens on August 10th mm -hmm. would see this as a priority because it has okay. to be prioritized because our, our national 
Antum says, every creed and race finds an equal, finds place. An equal place. Yes. And that is not the case in practicality, no. in actual practice. And you yes. would be a living example of that. Yes. You know the challenges you have faced <laughs> in terms of accessing education yeah. and the support systems that you needed mm -hmm. to fulfill your potential. Right. And in terms of changing this narrative, right, uh, uh, it is clear that persons who are put into power in terms of the way it's better, it's social development, education, infrastructure. How can we educate them? Because when they go into power, they're so busy, one, and then they have their job to do. But how can we educate them to change the narrative in terms of, mm, let, let me think back, it is not charity. It is, you know what? I have to work towards getting persons with disability and other groups in society to be just like anyone else. Well, I think, let me start by saying, you are doing the education right here. Okay. <laughs> you are a shining example of mm -hmm. what potential lies in someone with a disability. So right. I think that's a start. I think people seeing you on television and on a national state television station at that mm -hmm. shows that at some level the state understands that mm -hmm. you have to get the same opportunities anybody else in the country has because mm -hmm. that is your right of equal treatment. Exactly. I think the next stage is an education minister, a minister of social development, a prime minister who understands that, you know what, everyone will become, will have a disability at some level. As we age, we will have disabilities. Yes. Every single one of us yeah. at some stage in our lives, if we're yeah. blessed to live that long, will have a disability. Don't you want to be treated equally when you get to that stage? Mm -hmm. And even if you don't, you have a disability at a young age, it is your human right. It is your national right to be treated equally, to be given the type of support that you need. Mm -hmm. so I think we just need to keep pounding away at it. Mm -hmm. I think w one of the challenges is that there are so many different special needs groups and disability groups in the country. It's difficult for any government to hear 30, 40 different groups. And yeah. there needs to be some sort of uniting of the groups in, in one singular voice. And that voice, the parents, the families, those affected, those associated, will form a loud enough chorus so that at one stage it will happen. I am absolutely sure to that. You, you actually, being here uh -huh. on this show uh -huh. is evidence that it is happening. And not only me, my actual guests, my guests and actually guests, come in and, and show their actual potential mm -hmm. and opportunities that they did not get in school. Mm -hmm. They come in here and show that, okay, I did not get an education in secondary school, but I went out and did something else mm -hmm. and now have talent entrepreneurial skills, et cetera. So it actually shows if they were given that opportunity, how far they would reach. So in terms of advice, what advice would you give persons in the Senate? And what advice would you give to the disabled community, other vulnerable communities, to mesh this gap that we have? Well, I've been giving advice in the Senate, and I think using yeah. my chairmanship of the uh, the committee, a uh, joint select committee on social services and public administration, we've covered a lot of areas in terms of the interventions that are needed for persons with special needs, uh, persons in, in the groups that is, are described as the elderly and other vulnerable groups in society. In many of my presentations, I've always included advocacy on behalf of those groups. I think th the advice to persons with disabilities and their families who are the real, who should be the real focus mm -hmm. is that m let your voice be heard. Mm -hmm. You see, August 10th coming up here, you are a vote. They need yeah. to value that vote. And I'm in <laughs> one of the most marginal constituencies in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and your vote and your life and your rights in Trinidad today and your ability to, to do the best like everybody else is as important as everyone else. Yeah. And that is what is important. Right. You, you mentioned earlier on the, the charity model. It's not charity. Yes. It's a right. Exactly. It's a right of equal treatment. Right. I want to say thank you so much. Really, it was a pleasure. And you, I always look up to you and thank you really for coming. Well, I, look I don't up to know you. how to say thank you. I just say thank you. But thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I, I really look up to you and I met your mom outside. Yeah. And congratulations to your mom and your family. Yes, for me that indeed, also. indeed. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. And guys, um, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to this week's segment <laughs> of Unique Not Different. Thank you again. And until next week, guys, be good. Do good. Bye, guys. Thank <laughs> you.